Tis I. Hey everyone, glad to see you back, glad to see you looking fresh, and welcome to the new year of 2023, and today I'm going to be taking a look forward into the entire year and looking at 50 games that are coming out in 2023. It's crazy, every year this list gets bigger. I like 50, 50 sounds like a nice round number, and this year was a blast to put this list together. I had a lot of fun, I could ramble on all day about that kind of stuff, but honestly, let's get to the games, that's why you're here. Let's get right into it. Starting the year off, we have One Piece Odyssey, a game that came out last week. And I'm sure if you're a One Piece fan, you're already all over this, but this is like a pretty solid RPG, very solid basic RPG. Nothing wrong with basics. It looks like One Piece. I'm not into One Piece like other shows, but maybe in the future, if I catch up on One Piece, I'll be able to go back and play this because it looks really good. Fire Emblem Engage, a brand new Fire Emblem and one I am very much looking forward to. I will be all over this game when it comes out. Looks like we're going back to the roots of Fire Emblem because Three Houses was fantastic and Fates before it was pretty good, but they added some stuff that I wasn't a big fan of and stuff that a lot of people were turned off by. This looks like it's going back to the basic, embracing its roots, and just being another great Fire Emblem, which honestly, I cannot wait for. Forspoken is a game which has caught a little bit of flack because of the comedy style. But honestly, Square Enix doing an open world RPG where you use magic as your main combat system sounds excellent. You're a girl, you're transported to another world, you have to try to find your way home and you're exploring and you're fighting and it looks like it could be pretty good. I hope it's pretty good <laughs> because really... I'm not a big fan of the comedy in this game either, but if the gameplay is solid, I think this game will be really solid. Story of Seasons, A Wonderful Life is a remake of Harvest Moon, A Wonderful Life, which if you don't know, Story of Seasons is what Harvest Moon is called now. It's more complicated than that. Story of Seasons is just a name, and Harvest Moon is just a name. Like They lost the rights to the name Harvest Moon. That's why Harvest Moon games that come out now seem pretty different from how they used to be. Story of Seasons is basically the spiritual successor and exact successor because they're remaking a lot of these games. And Wonderful Life was a really, really good Harvest Moon game, so I'm really happy to see that given a new life here. Dead Space. The Dead Space remake is one I'm very much looking forward to. I think a lot of people were turned off by the Callisto Protocol last year, and I think they wanted Dead Space. And luckily enough, Dead Space is here to fill that void. This is a game I've been meaning to play since back on the Xbox 360, to be honest. And to finally be able to play this in a new format, uh, fresh, beautiful, disgusting, and I can't wait. SpongeBob SquarePants, The Cosmic Shake, is made by the same team that did the remake of Battle for Bikini Bottom. And they've been given free reign to make whatever platform they want. They are not tied down to any remake. They don't have to attach themselves to anything specific. They're just like, here you go. Here's the SpongeBob license. Do what you want. And I think that's a great idea. I haven't watched SpongeBob in a long time. But I am looking forward to playing this. Hogwarts Legacy. Another open world an RPG where you get to use magic. Of course, this one's based on the Harry Potter franchise. And even as someone who's not a fan of the Harry Potter franchise, this game looks really good. It looks really well made. It looks exciting. It looks like it could be an absolute winner if done well. And honestly, I'm not even giving it a try because, like I said, even though I don't like Harry Potter that much, I think the world, I think the magic, I think these characters could be great. Harry Potter fans rejoice. Looks like there's something great coming your way. Tales of Symphonia Remastered. Another remake remaster i think this one's just a remaster not a remake of a beloved rpg it's coming this year again again i've been meaning to play but have you seen the price of this game it's ridiculous so bringing this game back out capitalizing on that buzz being able to play this game that a lot of people claim is one of the best rpgs one of the best tales games if not the best very excited atomic heart we're talking 1950s, we're talking sci-fi, robotics, style alone, this game looks great. Gameplay-wise, this game looks great. It's coming out soon. Looks like it'd be really great. Like a Dragon, Ishin. So I guess this is a whole new spin-off franchise from the Yakuza games. This one is going way back in time. 
We're talking samurai, we're talking old Japan. We're getting a lot more samurai games recently, which is a great thing. You know, I'm not super into the Yakuza games, but honestly, this one's intriguing me a lot. I might have to give this one a try. Well, Angular Dragon seemed pretty cool, seemed like a new fresh take on the franchise, and this seems like no different. Kirby's Return to Dreamland Deluxe is a remaster remake of Kirby's Return to Dreamland from the Wii, a Kirby game that unfortunately I was not able to play back in the day, so more Kirby's a great thing. There's been a lot of Kirby's last year, it looks like more into this year, and hey, more Kirby was a great thing, especially a game that I have not played yet. I'll absolutely be giving this one a try. Octopath Traveler 2 is obviously the second Octopath Traveler game, and continuing in the beautiful HD 2D art style, that the first game cemented as one of the premier art styles. Looks like just more Octopath, new set of characters. So if you didn't like the characters in the first one, but you like that gameplay, you like that world, here you go. Brand new. I'm sure it's like Square is probably going to treat this like their Final Fantasies and their Dragon Quest where they're just going to number them, but the characters aren't really going to overlap. And we have a whole new franchise to explore. Whoa Long Fallen Dynasty is Team Ninja's new game set in Three Kingdoms era. And, you know, Team Ninja, very hard stuff, very action-oriented, very intense, and honestly, I don't see this being any different. I see this one being a great piece of action and a lot of fun for people who really like to sink their teeth into something very difficult. So if that's your thing, Bayonetta Origins, Seriza and the Lost Demon. Is it Seriza, Seriza? I don't think we've had official, like, spoken word of this yet so whatever the heck this game is it was announced at the game awards a bayonetta origins game looks like the gameplay is wildly different i'm intrigued more than i'm excited for this one specifically i'm not as big in the bayonetta as some people i think the games are really good but this one i'm like maybe we'll see how this one goes star wars jedi survivor this game looks awesome the first game was really, really solid. A great Star Wars game. Great new character to explore those worlds. And this game looks like it's taking everything great about that game, building upon it, and giving us more of it. And I am very excited to give this one a try. This is my favorite Souls-like franchise, I guess, now. Because I really liked the last game. And I am very much looking forward to this game. I hope it continues to be great. Have a Nice Death is a very nice-looking roguelite and i was lucky enough to play this last year at pax east and it left a great impression on me and i'm looking forward to the full release of this game coming out soon get to play it on the console um, no early release this is the full release to play with a little death and you get to go around and it's your job you have a nice death and you play as him and you it's just it's just another day at the office really Resident Evil 4, I'm sure a lot of people's most anticipated game for next year. The Resident Evil remakes have been spectacular. Resident Evil 2 got me into the franchise. Resident Evil 3, uh, maybe not be as good. But as its own game, it's, it's really solid. It's kind of short, but it's really solid. And Resident Evil 4, from a historical site, has been called one of the best games ever made. So Capcom, I believe, know what they're getting themselves into here. They have a lot to live up to, and I have full faith that they will absolutely nail this, and this will be one of the best games of the year. Crime Boss, Rock A City. Now this is a game that was announced at the Game Awards, and I couldn't really make heads or tails of it. At the beginning, I was like, oh, this looks like a GTA clone. But then they started showing off different actors, I'm like, all of these people are in the game. There's the like, Vanilla Ice and there's the Chuck Norris. Like, this game seems kind of crazy, and I'm here for it. I think the world was let down by last year's Saints Row. So getting crazy, wacky, GTA-esque games, I think we're in need of right now. Mega Man Battle Network Legacy Collection is a collection of Mega Man Battle Network Legacy games, and... That seems pretty cool. <laughs> I've never played these. I never had a really good chance to play them. And having them all in one place, that seems great. I honestly thought this came out already. But I guess it hasn't. So that's a thing. But anyway, it's, it is coming out. And I will be excited to give it a try. Dead Island 2 is finally 
maybe coming out. This game has been announced and pushed and then announced and pushed. I just hope it's good. I hope for the people that have waited so long for a sequel to Dead Island that it's good. We've had a lot more zombie games since Dead Island, but that fan base has been waiting and waiting and waiting, and I hope for their sake it's it's a great game. Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. Tears of the Kingdom. One of those two. I mean, what more can I say about Legend of Zelda, the sequel to Breath of the Wild, that I haven't said already? I believe I talked about this in my last two upcoming games videos. I mean, it's a sequel to Breath of the Wild. I mean, that alone is enough to get excited for, even if we've seen no gameplay, which we really haven't seen that much. But anything new they want to put on, whatever. It's Zelda, really, at the end of the day, so... I'll be there. I'm sure a lot of you will be as well. Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League. This game I am nervous about because we've not seen any gameplay yet. And this is another one I talked about, I'm pretty sure, for the last couple of these that I was excited to play it. Kept getting pushed. A screenshot recently leaked, which makes me nervous that that's what the game is kind of going to be. It's like a battle pass. There, the whole thing, the UI doesn't look very appealing. I hope that's either a rough cut, an old cut, or just wrong. Because I want this game to just be another great Rocksteady game. I don't want another Games of Service game, you know. As a fan base, we've been burnt too many times on games like this. Especially with, like, the Avengers game. So we just want a full experience. And, you know, I hope that's what we get. If there's, like, multiplayer, like, added on, kind of like how Ghost of Tsushima did it then I'd be totally fine with it, but I'm, I'm nervous, but I'm still optimistically looking forward to this game. Street Fighter VI, obviously, the, the sixth Street Fighter game, which isn't even really true because of how many virgins each Street Fighter gets. Nevertheless, this looks like it's going a bold new direction. Obviously, it's keeping that classic fighter, that 2D fighting game. A lot of great characters are coming back. We seem to have a lot of cool new faces to use and to love. Um, there's cool new side modes and worlds to explore, so it looks like they're really going all in on this. Unlike Street Fighter V when it first came out, which wasn't the greatest release in the world. So Street Fighter VI it looks great. Diablo IV. Now, I'm not a big fan of Diablo, but I cannot deny the importance it has a lot of people, the greatness that a lot of people see in it, and for them, I hope Diablo IV is an amazing dungeon crawler. I hope it stands up to the likes of Diablo 2, which I'm sure is a lot of people's favorite. I'm here for you. Maybe I'll give it a try. If it's that good and I can get a group of guys together, maybe I'll give it a go. Final Fantasy 16. Been waiting for this for a while. I love Final Fantasy 15. I cannot wait for them to go back to pure fantasy roots. I obviously really enjoy Final Fantasy when it's in also modern settings, but just straight up fantasy, like, magic and like there's no cars there's no technology there's no guns there's nothing like that it's pure old school like tolkien-esque fantasy and the gameplay looks awesome this game looks awesome and i cannot wait to play it robocop rogue city could be good could also be bad i mean that's true about all these games i guess the terminator game that came out a couple years ago wasn't the best thing in the world. It was okay. It was a, it was very much okay. I hope Rogue City kind of breaks the mold on that one and is actually pretty good, but I guess we'll have to wait and see. And those are all the games that have set release dates or set release windows. And these are all the games that are left that are slated for this year, but don't have full either dates or windows or anything like that. These ones are the ones that are more likely to get pushed off. 24 but hey optimistically these will all come out and it'll be one of the grandest years in gaming of all time but let's just get right back into things alan wake 2 obviously a sequel to the more recent alan wake game um remedies games uh i played control i really liked it i played quantum break i thought it was okay so honestly i just haven't played alan wake yet which is a game i've been meaning to play so maybe this will be my excuse to jump into it aliens dark descent is a really interesting looking top down strategy alien game hey whatever they want to do with the alien license i'm kind of here for more alien experiences seem interesting that world that universe has always intrigued me it's always fascinated me with how dark grim and mysterious it can be so more alien seems cool another crab's treasure is my grand indie pick for this which is crazy 
Uh, I always like to give a little spotlight to some indie games when doing these. This is my most anticipated indie game, I think, for next year. It is, like, Dark Souls, but you're a crab. And you're under the sea, and you're attacking monsters under the sea, and it looks awesome. <laughs> it just looks awesome. Ark 2! Uh, we haven't heard much about this since it got announced. It's a sequel to Ark that has Vin Diesel in it. Uh, okay. I don't know what else even... There's to say, I don't know if it's single player oriented or if it's still multiplayer oriented. I have no idea, but Arc 2, I guess. <laughs> Assassin's Creed Mirage is this year's Assassin's Creed game. It's been, actually, it'll be three years since the last one. There's been a, it's been a gap of time since Assassin's Creed games. And this one says it's going back to its roots. The new games have gotten too grand and too open. Which I kind of agree. I think dialing it back and really fine-tuning the open world and the exploration and not having an entire country to walk around is a great idea for Assassin's Creed. And I think this game could really benefit from something like that. Avatar Frontiers of Pandora. We've entered in the age of Avatar. So whenever Ubisoft wants to release this game, I think... The world is ready. I don't think the world will be more ready than it is right now for more Avatar. So whenever they want to drop this, go ahead. You know, I'm sure if there is a Ubisoft E3 press conference, we'll probably hear about it. And I'm excited because I think the world of Pandora has a lot to explore, as we see in the last Avatar movie. And there could be a great game out of it. Exo Primal is Capcom... Not making a dino crisis, but still making a dino game where you fight dinosaurs with your friends. They're coming through wormholes. It looks very weird. But anyways, it's Capcom. Dinosaurs seems cool enough to me. Final Fantasy VII Rebirth is uh, slated for this year. Probably set for December, much like Crisis Core was. But if I had to bet on one game being pushed, it'd be this one. But regardless, I just finished playing Final Fantasy VII for the first time. So I am more than ready to delve back into the remake universe and seeing that world again again i'm so ready for it i'm so ready for the next step past midgar now that i know what's actually going on i kind of have my expectations to be met I'm very excited forza motorsports uh this is more of the hardcore car focused forza games i'm more into the horizon games which are open world they're a little more arcadey uh, they're a little more fun for me, but if you're more into the the hardcore driving aspects, Forza Motorsports looks like it's going to be great. Hollow Knight Silk Song? Uh, yeah, it's supposed to be coming out. Hollow Knight's great, you know that. If you haven't played it, play it. I don't know what you're waiting for. Silk Song's supposed to be coming out this year, so that's awesome if it does. Lord of the Rings Gollum? I still don't know what the heck this game is. Uh, I don't think the developers <laughs> know what this game is. Uh, I'm just giving up a hard time. Is it supposed to come out this year? Maybe. It's supposed to come out last year. It obviously didn't. So, I guess this year sometime. Metal Slug Tactics is made by the same team that did Shredder's Revenge, TMNT Shredder's Revenge, and that game looks awesome, plays awesome. So, giving them a tactics game with a notable IP seems like a winning formula. I'm there for it. Minecraft Legends, a tactics game which I am not as much into. Uh, another Minecraft spinoff. I didn't even play the last one. Minecraft Dungeons, I, I honestly forgot it even came out till thinking about it right now. So maybe this will be good, but it'll probably just be forgettable like that. But hey, benefit of the doubt, might be great. Pal World. If you haven't heard about Pal World, imagine Pokemon with guns. <laughs> and I'm not even joking. This is one of the weirdest trailers. It's weird that it's, a, it's an actual game. And it's coming out. It's supposed to be coming out this year. So if it does, I might, might very much give this a try. Because it's weird, and it's wacky, and it looks fun. Pikmin 4. Uh, okay. I guess this game is supposed to be coming out, finally. Miyamoto said this game was, like, almost done back in 2015, but I... Unless they were talking about a different game where they completely scrapped that, I don't know what the heck took them so long. But it's been a long time since Pikmin 3, and I'm excited for more Pikmin. The Plucky Squire. Another great indie hopefully gem, that has a beautiful art style, really wowed me when it was shown off during its showcase. Bucket Sky looks like a game that is something I've never really played before, but it, through its creative vision and art style, I'm very much looking forward to trying something as new as this. Pragmata. 
is another Capcom new IP. I I don't know what this game is. I'm going to be blunt. It looks strange, but it's made by Capcom, put in the RE engine, so I'm at least interested. I'm very curious about this game. Maybe it'll be a masterpiece. We have no idea. I don't know. I don't know anything about this. This trailer tells me nothing. It just looks strange, but hey, strange new Capcom game. Redfall. We're talking vampires. We're talking killing vampires. We're talking exploring this world. Taking down vampires. And a lot of vampires. I said vampires a lot. And I'm going to continue to say vampires because this is a new vampire game. It looks cool. It looks fun. And let's tell you. Vampires, baby. Replaced. This game looks awesome. I've been a champion for this game since I saw it years ago. It looks like a bit of that Blade Runner art style. There's also a beautiful pixel art style that I cannot get enough of. This game looks awesome. A game like Arno that came out last year was kind of in the same vein, but this one looks to be one more step up. Really, really going all in on this kind of thing, and it looks awesome. Skull and Bones, which, making this list, I had up in the section that had release dates, but it got pushed. Wouldn't you know, again, I don't know if this game's going to come out this year or not. I don't know what Ubisoft even has here. A game that is just a joke at this point with how many times it's been pushed. But hey, I'm sure they don't want a cyberpunk on their hands. So keep pushing it until it's ready, I guess. Spider-Man 2 is supposed to come out this year. Uh, Insomniac said it's supposed to come out this year. I am inclined to believe them. The first Spider-Man was fantastic. Maybe the best superhero game of all time. So a sequel to that, including Miles Morales and Venom is in it awesome so many great things they can do with this just swing around the city is fun and we could do more of that i'll be happy starfield is either skyrim or fallout in space whatever you want to call it the new thing from bethesda very hesitantly excited uh we've been burnt by bethesda before and i hope we're not burnt this time there's a lot of worlds to explore a lot of things to see hopefully a lot of things to do that's the main thing. You can put a thousand worlds in your game, but if 995 of them are boring, what was the point? I hope that's not the point. I hope the point is that there are a thousand interesting worlds to see. So, hesitantly excited, but that's Starfield. And rounding us off with Wolf Among Us 2, which is a game I have been wanting for a long time. I thought we would never get after Telltale shut down, but hey... It got announced and it's slated for this year, so now's the time. More Bigby Wolf, the Fables comic, tell a great story. This last game told a fantastic story. And it's a game I've replayed multiple times and thinking back on it, it was one of the first games I had with my PlayStation 4 too. Great memories there, a game I loved, finally getting a sequel. I cannot wait. So there we have it. 50 games. Coming out in 2023. It's supposed to come out in 2023. One of them already did. I'm one for 50 so far. What of these are you most looking forward to? If all these games come out this year, I don't know how the Game Awards are going to shape up. I don't know how people are going to perceive at the end of the year. But honestly, it's going to be one heck of a year. I mean, all these come out and they're bad too. So <laughs> it could be one disappointing year. Which I don't think it will be. I think it'll be a fantastic year for games. Please let me know if I missed anything. What? games are you looking forward to this year that i didn't talk about i'm sure you know in february stuff will get announced to come out in july that i don't even know about yet that could be one of the best games of all time you know it's how these things kind of happen but right now that's our list thank you so very much for watching and as always like this if you like this subscribe if you haven't already and i will see you at some point